Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game from the Gashimov Memorial Tournament. It's actually a game from round 2, we already said if there will be a slow round. Uh, round 4 seems a bit uh, a bit slow, so I, I haven't decided if I will be showing any games from round 4 yet. Uh, but until then, uh, it's a, a very nice game, Ding Liren vs Alexander Grishchuk, uh, as you've requested. Uh, I do understand why you requested it, it's really uh, a beauty. Uh, so without further ado, let's just check it out. Uh, Ding has the white pieces and he opens with d4. Uh, we have knight to f6, c4, uh, we have g6, and now f3, uh, the, the anti-Grunfeld. Uh, we have c5 by Grishuk, uh, we have d5, uh, d6, and e4. Uh, going for the Benoni type structure, we have e6 by black, knight to c3, and now after an exchange in the center, captures, captures, uh, we go into the main line of the Benoni defense. Uh, and okay, bishop to g7, we have knight g to e2 by Ding, knight bd7, uh, and now knight to g3. And here Ding is basically repeating the uh, the same line uh, Grishuk already played with the white with the black pieces in the 2000 and, um, uh, 2018 candidates tournament. Uh, Grishuk had this position against Levon Aronian, and uh, it's a it's a it's a similar uh, a similar line after h5. This is also what Grishuk played against Aronian. Uh, bishop to e2 was played. Knight to h7 now. Uh, and here, bishop to f4 was played by Aronian, and uh, that game was drawn between Grishuk and Aronian. But here, uh, Ding has a different idea. Instead of bishop to f4, he goes knight to f1. And this move was never played before. It is already in this move from move 11 uh, that we have a completely new game. And for for an opening uh, as old as the Benoni, uh, it's always interesting to have a new game already on move 11. So, okay, queen to h4 check immediately by Grishuk. Now, if you go knight back to g3, just block with the knight, then black is just gonna go queen e7, and it's like you wasted the move. Uh, you lost the tempo, it's like your knight remained on g3, and the black had two moves here. It's like he played knight h7 and queen to e7. Uh, so, not something you wanna do. So, uh, this is what uh, Ding prepared. He played g3, now queen goes back to e7, and now knight to e3. The knight is remaneuvered to the e3 square. Uh, Grishuk castles, and now we have a4. Uh, knight to e5 by Grishuk, and now castles by Ding, uh, just, you know, bringing his king over to safety and basically inviting bishop to h3, which Grishuk immediately employs. Uh, we have rook to e1, and now comes rook a to e8, and with this rook uh, a to e8, Grishuk basically uh, finishes development of his pieces. You still have to figure out what to do with the knight on h7, but uh, your, your other pieces are, you know, doing pretty excellently. And this is what uh, Ding wanted with the white pieces. He wanted to create something that was never played before and now he he's looking for his chances i haven't um uh, i haven't seen the interview after the game so i don't know how far ding's preparation went but uh, i would be very interested to, to hear it uh, bishop to d2 by ding now comes a6 and uh, rook to a3 a very nice rook lift that that can be used to guard the third rank but also it can be used as an attacking resource for example rook to b2 can be played uh going after the b7 pawn so here, queen to c7 by black, and now comes f4. A very nice idea by Ding. Uh, uh, I think um, by this point, uh, Ding is still well inside his preparation. Uh, here, you have to go bishop to g4. It seems like an ugly ugly move because white is attacking that uh, square three times, uh, and you will lose a pawn, but uh, uh, the, the alternative is no better. Here, uh, Grishuk instead went back, knight to d7. And usually the hardest move to find is with the knight back, but here, here it's uh, not the case. Uh, here, the knight on d7 now blocks the retreat uh, square of the bishop uh, on h3. Uh, all the other squares are taken, as you can see, uh, by the white pawns. And, uh, well, okay, g4 isn't taken, but uh, you will still lose, uh, lose a pawn. Uh, so here, uh, Ding just goes for bishop captures on h5. And it's a very nice idea if pawn captures, then queen captures, and now uh, g4 square is taken by the queen. All of these squares are taken. The bishop has nowhere to retreat, and you will just uh, win the piece and remain uh, with uh, extra pawns. So after bishop captures on h5, we have c4. Uh, creating the c5 outpost for the knight so the bishop can retreat uh, and Ding just moves the bishop back. We have bishop to f3. So uh, by uh, switching uh, the, the line a bit uh, from, from the candidates game that um, uh, Grishuk played against Aronian, uh, Ding is already up a pawn on move 21. Uh, so okay, knight to c5, now the bishop does have a ret retreat square, queen to c2, uh, bringing another defender to the e4 pawn, uh, and now comes knight to b3. And it's a uh, 
it's a very dangerous move because it's an excellent outpost for the Black Knight. Uh, the rook is now has nowhere to go. You always have to keep an eye on the knight captures bishop, and it's the knight just disappeared. Sorry, uh, and uh, well. It's just a wonderful position. But here, a very interesting line is knight captures on c4, but it's not good for white. Uh, your idea is, okay, if black captures, I'm just gonna, sorry, uh, I'm just gonna capture the knight on b3, but here black goes knight here first, with an attack on the queen and the bishop, and the bishop is not uh, defended. So here you would have to go queen d3, knight captures with check, queen captures, and now queen captures on c4. And okay, uh, bl uh, you didn't win a piece, because after g4, the bishop is trapped, uh, but still, black black uh, always comes up on top. After b5, captures, captures, you are threatening b4 now, uh, and after the knight moves, let's say knight to d1, you play b4, the rook has to move, and the bishop to d4 is coming. It's, uh, it, it's just a very... Uh, a very dangerous line for white to play black would be better here so after knight to b3 uh, ding just played rook captures on b3 and this is uh, what's nice in chess if you're up a pawn uh, you can just uh, give up the exchange to grab another pawn then you will be down the exchange but you will be up uh, two pawns which is a very nice compensation in itself uh, so c captures on b3 was played queen captures on b3 by ding uh, and now king to h8 and here we have knight c to d1 g4 uh, g4 is interesting, but it um, will not work. For example, if you try to go after the bishop with the king, uh, black will just go f5 and the bishop will escape and you will weaken your kingside position a bit too much. So here, Ding finds another way to go after the bishop. He plays knight c to d1. He go, He's preparing knight to f2, so the bishop will have to move. We have f5 and only now knight to f2. Uh, the bishop is under attack, but Grishuk first captures an e4. Uh, we have pawn captures, uh, bishop captures on e4, and now bishop to f5. Finally, the bishop moves, uh, and uh, you, uh, here Ding doesn't want to clear the e-file while his own rook occupies the e-file. So first, rook to c1. Uh, he attacks the queen, forces the queen to move, but also he's planning rook c4 to b4 to go after the b7 pawn. Uh, he definitely doesn't want to allow Grishuk's rooks to, to become active. Uh, so, queen to d7, and now bishop back to f3. He's not interested in any trades, he just wants to play rook c4, rook b4. Uh, we have knight to f6, Grishuk now uh, tries to, to, to activate his knight, uh, and now rook to c4, which is just an excellent move, uh, you know, a multi-purpose move, as it prepares rook b4, but also uh, adds another defender to the e4 square, you don't want to allow moves like knight to e4. Uh, so, queen to e7, and now comes knight captures on f5. G captures on f5 and king to g2. Just not uh, uh, allowing any, any weaknesses to remain in the in, in white's camp. Uh, rook to c8, offering a trade, but now just rook to b4, going after an attack here, and rook to c7. And here, just a5, not allowing the, uh, the, the weak uh, b7 pawn to be pushed forward. And here, Grishuk plays a very interesting move, uh, which uh, creates a lot of complications. He plays knight to d7. And it's, uh, it's interesting because rook captures on b7 is definitely a possibility, but what happens after rook captures on b7 is, uh, is very interesting. Uh, rook captures, queen captures, and now rook to b8. You force the queen to move. Queen captures on a6, rook captures on b2, and this is where the magic happens. Most likely, well, I'm sure I'm sure Ding calculated all of this out, uh, but there's a very nice line for white here in this position, bishop c3. You force a trade of dark square bishops, and after bishop captures, now you just pick it up. Queen c8 check, you pick up the bishop, king h7, queen captures, and here rook k2, putting the rook behind a pass pawn. You would have this position where black is still up the exchange, but white is up three pawns, and he does have he, he already has two two pass pawns. It would be a better a better position for white, but it's hard to say if it would be enough to win. Uh, Ding decides it's not enough to win, so he doesn't capture. First, he prepares it, bishop to d1. He wants to after he captures and the rook uh, you know crashes down on b2. He wants to be able to block uh, the attack towards the dark square bishop with bishop to c2. Uh, so okay, queen to f7. Uh, by Grishuk, and only now rook captures on b7. We have rook captures, queen captures, and now rook to b8. Uh, and here, not capturing the pawn, but first uh, rook, uh, queen to c6. Uh, preparing to capture here. Uh, we have rook captures on b2, and now queen uh, bishop to c2. This is why he didn't capture on a6. Uh, he wanted the queen to be guarding the bishop on c2. 
uh, we have uh, bishop to d4 now. Uh, also, a rook to b5 was a possibility, just to bring the rook to a nice active square, uh, pressure the d5 pawn. Uh, but here, uh, he has a different plan. He plays bishop to d4, <coughs> uh, and here uh, we have knight to d3, attacking the rook, and it's a very interesting move, because after rook to a2, uh, you could play queen to c4, which comes with a double attack against the bishop and against the rook on a2. So, after knight to d3, Grishuk decides to, to give, um, well, to, to offer back the exchange by playing queen to e7. Now, if you capture, you allow the queen to, to you know, jump down on e2 uh, and start an attack. So, first, king to f1. Ding doesn't allow it, and now Grishuk runs back with the rook. We have rook to b8, uh, and now knight to e1, remaneuvering the knight to f3, and from there, the knight can be uh, uh, used to attack the black king. Uh, knight to c5 by Grishuk, now comes knight to f3, and bishop back to f6, just controlling the f3 knight uh, with this opposition very nicely, uh, and bishop captures on f5 by Ding. Uh, rook goes back to b3, with an attack uh, not there, but with an attack against the knight on f3. Uh, queen to c8 check with king to g7, and now comes knight to g5, uh, offering a knight, and you do have to capture it. Mm. It's um, it's it's quite a quite a poisonous position. If you try something like queen uh, queen d8 with, with the idea of changing queens, uh, you have ideas like queen captures on c5 lurking because after pawn captures you can go knight e6 check, pick up the queen. Let's say king f7 captures with check. Uh, you will capture the knight, and uh, after bishop to e6, uh, you will just have uh, a lot of pressure with all of these pass pawns, you know, just marching forward. Uh, so, after this knight to g5 move, Grishuk decides to capture it. We have bishop captures on g5, uh, f captures on g5, and now, again, uh, Grishuk has to decide how he wants to play this. He's not interested in, in, in something like queen e5, a nice centralizing move, which would pretty much... Uh, offer up uh, drawing chances, uh, let's say after queen to c7, you could go king f8, queen c8 check, you could just be repeating moves, king g7, queen c7 check. Uh, Grishuk is not interested in something like that, he wants to start an attack. Uh, rook to f3 with check. We have king to g2, and now queen to e2 with check. King to h3, and now again, uh, you could try something like queen to e5. Uh, sorry about that, I'll be back in, in just one second. Oh, sorry about that, I'm back. I uh, just had to open the door. Uh, so, after queen to e5, which could be uh, an ideal uh, move, just an, oh, again a nice centralizing move. Again, you could go for something like queen c7 check, king f8, bishop to g4, just um, n not even going for a draw. White could even be better here. So here, Grishuk decides to go for a different idea. Uh, he gives up the rook for two pieces. We have rook captures on f5. Uh, queen captures on f5, and now queen captures on d2. So here, Grishuk is up a knight, uh, but he's down three pawns, and those pawns are very close to, <laughs> to the black king, especially the g5 pawn. So here, what Ding does is first queen f6 check. King g8, and now queen g6 check. Uh, king to h8, and now queen captures on d6, going after the knight on c5. So as there are no checks to be given to the white king, white black first has to deal with uh, how to how to uh, defend the knight. You could defend it with the queen. Grishuk decides to go for knight to d3. Uh, queen to h6 check, getting the queen out of the way so uh, the, the pass d pawn can uh, be pushed forward. Uh, we have king to g8 and now queen to e6 check. King to g7, queen to e7 check, king to g8, and now comes d6. So you do have to deal with this pass pawn, and it's not um, all that clear how you will do it. Uh, but white also has to defend. Uh, Grishuk goes knight to f2 check. King to h4, and now comes queen to d4 check. Uh, we have king to h5, and now queen to d1 check. And here, again, a very interesting position. Uh, you have to play it precisely. If you play something like king to h6, uh, then black can get an easy draw. Knight g4 check, now you either go into some discoveries, or you go king g6, now queen d3 check. Uh, king back to h5, and now queen to f5, and uh, it's, not, uh, it's not all that clear how you will avoid uh, any checks. If you try something like, uh, something like queen to d8 check, uh, you could go king h7, queen c7 check, you could go king g8, and uh, you will just have to keep on checking because 
well, you don't want you don't want to allow uh, black any moves. You can even get checkmated. For example, if you try something like d7, uh, just knight f6 check is per perfectly fine. Either king h4 will follow queen g4 checkmate, or if you go uh, to h6, queen to h7 checkmate. Uh, so you have to play this very precisely. G4. Amazingly, this is the move that uh, <laughs> the only move that works for White, and the Ding calculates it precisely. Because if Queen captures on G4, then you go King to G6, and you don't have a defense against uh, checkmate. Uh, well, you could defend it uh, with something like queen e4 check, but then just queen captures on e4, knight captures, and there's no stopping uh, the, the, the pass d pawn. So, after g4, you cannot capture with the queen. Grisho captures with the knight. And okay, now you do have some nasty discoveries uh, in sight, uh, but it doesn't work. Uh, I'll, I'll let you decide how, how to play this position on. It's not all that difficult, so I, I'm not even going to wait for you to pause the video. I'm just going to have a nice sip of my water. Uh, of course, now you pick up the knight, and this is the only chance black had. Uh, queen e8 check or queen e6 immediately. Uh, Ding decides to go uh, queen e8 check. He wants to force the king back from the from the back rank. King g7 now queen d7 check. King to h8, and now he picks it up. Uh, queen captures here. White of black, of course, cannot afford to trade queen, so he captures the pass pawn. And here, uh, Ding was able to to win back the piece, but he's still up uh, two pawns. So. Uh, I mean, in, in a queen and pawn, the end game being up two points is a pretty big deal. Uh, we have queen to c8, uh, uh, queen to c8 with check, uh, king to g7, and now comes queen to c3 with check, king to h7, queen to c2 check, king to g7, and now h4. The two connected pass pawns are now going forward. Uh, queen to e6, uh, hoping to deliver at least some checks, uh, but queen to c7 check. We have king to h8, and now queen to d8 check. <clears throat> Uh, king to h7, queen to c7 check, repeating uh, uh, repeating once just, you know, to for, for some reason. Sometimes people just do this, and now queen to b6. Uh, of course, black still cannot trade, and you do have a few checks available to you. But first, queen to c4 check, defending the a6 pawn. Uh, we have queen to d8 uh, with check, king to g7, and now queen to e7 check. King to g8, and now comes king to h6. And okay, now the king is uh, creating a wall here against the against the black king. Uh, queen to e8 is the threat of checkmate. Also, queen to g7 is the threat of checkmate. Black has to deal with this. Uh, queen to c6 check. Uh, we have g6 now, and now queen to c1 check. Uh, we have queen to g5, queen to d1 now. Uh, and here, uh, <clears throat> Grishuk is still not resigning because there's still hope, uh, some hope. Uh, but, uh, you know, the uh, ding is not 2800 pl 2800 plus for uh, without a reason. Uh, but again, feel free to pause the video here and try to find the, the cleanest way to, to win this with the white pieces. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent finisher of games. Uh, and for those of you who played something like G7... Uh, you will not be winning this game because now black can actually draw this. Uh, for example, queen d6 check, uh, queen g6 blocking, queen back to d2 check, uh, you can now block back, queen g5, queen d6 check, and if you try something like king to h5, uh, the problem is now black has this uh, resource of going queen g6. And now uh, you will either go to g4 and black will continue checking you, or you will capture the queen with the king or the queen, and uh, you will stalemate the black king. So uh, there was, a, of course, this possibility if Ding was... Uh, uh, being hasty or something, uh, but uh, you know, Ding doesn't rush things, he just uh, calmly played queen to f4, and uh, it was in this position on move 77 that Alexander Grishuk resigned the game. Uh, why did he resign? Uh, well, now there's uh, the obvious threat of checkmate. You could go queen b8 check, you can go queen f7 check, followed by something like queen uh, g7 or, or h7 checkmate. So here, once you stop one, let's say you go here, prevent this one, uh, you will face something like queen d4, and again, threaten all sorts of checkmates, and after you stop one of them, uh, you will get the other one. And, for example, queen d8 will be checkmated. There's no way out of this. Uh, but yeah... Uh, 
Grishuk did not wait for it. After queen to f4, he resigned the game. So yeah, a lot of very interesting moments in this game. Uh, Grishuk uh, twice, he didn't want to go into a drawish position with that queen e5, nice centralizing move. He wanted to beat the ding. He went all out on an attack with the black pieces. That's how real chess is played. And we should all congratulate Grishuk uh, on this game as well as ding. Because you don't create a game like this by yourself. If your opponent is not interested uh, in at least trying to beat you, then, you know, most likely the game w would have been drawn. Uh, but yeah, this is how real chess is played, and I'm very happy I, I got to show this game uh, on my channel. So yeah, uh, I would like to thank Michael Hildebrand, uh, David McKeever, uh, Darwin Dan Boyle, uh, Jamie Reyes, and Silvio Stefan for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, uh, hopefully with some more interesting content. Uh, thank you all, and I'll, I will see you soon.